Howdy folks, welcome back to Duke Frazier Productions. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the 1862 Pocket Police. Stay tuned. Alright folks, as we said, we're going to take a look here at uh, the 1862 Pocket Police. Uh, now this gun is made by Uberti. Um, and this is an older gun. I think this is the oldest uh, cap and ball gun that I've got in my collection. Uh, this one was made in 1982, if I remember right, by what the date code says. And uh, it is a little bit different than what's on the current market. Uh, now this one has a silver um, back, uh, back strap and trigger guard. I'm guessing this is white brass. I don't think it's actual silver or else it's silver plated brass. Um, and the case hardening on it is a little bit lighter in color. Uh, it's not as dark as the newer ones are. And then the barrel itself is actually uh, charcoal blued. Uh, if I remember right, I think it's, yeah, it's charcoal bluing. Um, and uh, it's it's seen some wear uh, and it, it needs to be cleaned because I haven't cleaned it yet. But uh, Overall, you know, I got this at a really, really um, good discounted price. Uh, and the reason for that is, is this little thing was broken uh, when I bought it. Uh, so that's one thing you got to look out for when you buy used guns uh, is whether or not they're still functioning because sometimes they're broken uh, on the internals. And when I went to buy this, I looked at it. I've been looking at a 62 Pocket Police for a while. This one was well within the, the price range that I could afford at the time. Um, and uh, I was talking and the guy told me that there was issues with this gun and that when you would come back to full cock, the cylinder would continue to rotate on it. Um, the reason for that is, is that the bolt portion of the trigger bolt spring was broken, um, which I told the guy, I said, that's, that's what's wrong with it. That's why it won't come up. And I said, it's going to be a real cheap fix for me. Uh, so the guy was kind enough that run the gun store was kind enough to discount it for me uh, even further from the, the price that was already outstanding, if you ask me. Um, so I got this, like I said, really good price. I brought it home and I thought, you know, I'll just swap out, get a new spring. And that's when all the headaches started because Uberti does not make parts for these to the same specifications uh, as they originally were. The trigger bolt spring on this uh, originally was a very uh, shallow, I just has like a gentle curve on the bolts. I don't know how to describe it. It's got a, a gentle curve to it. Um, on the new ones, on the bolts portion of the spring, it comes out in that nice gentle curve and then it does a freaking 45 and then another 45. And the new ones would not fit in this. So I tried playing around, I tried making a new one. Uh, that would work um, and I got it it was working all right and then all of a sudden it broke too so I, apparently I didn't have my heat treat right or I put too much pressure on it at once I'm not sure uh, so I got tired of messing around with that and I decided to start making more major adjustments uh, so what I wound up doing was filing a great big notch in the bottom of the bolt to accommodate that that not, uh, 45s shape in that spring and I'll, of course I'll have a picture of it up here um, because the, the big thing was is there was not enough space between the trigger guard, the bolt, to get that big curly cue and that spring in there. Uh, so I had to notch the bolt down to get it to accommodate it. And it worked out just fine. Um, and I also had to do a little other work on it because the bolt was coming off the cam too soon. Um, I played around with the trigger and I actually took a little too much off of it, but it still works uh, just fine. And uh, finally, I got it to where it goes to half cock, and you can turn the cylinder because the bolt was slipping off at half cock, slipping off the cam. Um, and I got that fixed. Now you can turn it, bring her back to full cock. And I, like I said, I did a little work on too much on the trigger. And so it's got a little bit of wiggle room in it, but it still goes off just fine. And it's that little bit of work that I did on the trigger that I took too much off of um, that's probably going to lead to it shooting high here in the footage. Uh, so without further ado, we'll go over and we'll show you that. All right, folks. So we got the 62 uh, Pocket Police out here at the range. Um, we're just going to 
pop off some rounds here uh, at uh, about 10 yards and see what it can do. Now, I've only got four clay birds set up out there. <laughs> That's because it rained out here and the ground uh, got hard on the surface. And I tried pushing that one in and I busted it. Um, but we'll go ahead and take these four. I probably won't hit all four of them anyway. Uh, but we got this loaded up with uh, 15 grains, 3F Go X. I used a, a 375 round ball Hornaday. I had some left over. I want to get rid of them. And being this is an older Uberti, I figured it would probably handle it. Um, but they are still a little bit small yet for it. And I noticed that the uh, uh, Remington number 10 caps are a little bit big on this gun, so we might have some issues. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take some shots here with it. Wow, that shoots really high. Really high. I'm aiming like two foot below it. I was aiming that low. Holy Moses, this shoots high. And this one blew back a little bit like the other pocket model was, but not bad. Now, one thing I've noticed with this Uberti, besides all the problems I've had with it getting it to work, because uh, the trigger bolt spring was broke, the new ones don't fit it. I had to really, really file the heck out of some parts. Um, but the mainspring in this is super stiff. Um, I mean, it. It kind of hurts my left hand to cock it because I got carpal tunnel on that. Um, but it, uh, it's got a really, really nice mainspring. I wish all the u birdies still had stiff mainsprings like that. But uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, load this thing up again. And uh, we'll take uh, five more shots with it. Things I kind of know where it's aiming at. All right, so we're loaded up again with the uh, 62 Pocket Police. Um, we're back out at 10 yards again. And, I'm going to see if I can hit any of these clay birds because uh, this thing shoots really super high. I hit two. And you know what I did? I quit aiming. Probably won't have the close-ups because my camera battery is about to die. I don't have a backup for this camera. Uh, so we're just going to have to call it good. But we'll go back to the Hacienda and talk a little bit about this. All right, so as you can see, this thing shoots really, really high. Um, it shoots so high that I decided to quit trying to aim. Uh, and I just began pointing it downrange at the, the clay birds. And I started to hit more. <laughs> I've always been more of an instinctive shooter. Um, I just never do it that much because everybody gives me a hard time for it because I'm not using the sights. Uh, but anyway, um, we did that. We, we hit the targets. We had some fun with it. Um, we don't didn't have a close-up uh, shots of it here today uh, just because, for one, uh, it was getting rather warm at the range. Even though we only had like a high of 80-some uh, degrees that day, um, that sun coming down, it was, it was fairly warm. There wasn't much of a breeze, thankfully, because... We would have had trouble with microphones if it would have. Um, but anyway, we didn't do the close-ups, as I said, for the third time here. Um, but maybe we'll do another little video with this gun. And also, I don't want to stress it out too much. I want to make sure it's going to work before I uh, break another part and have to do more work on it again. All right, folks. Well, that's going to take care of it today on the little 62 Pocket Police from your birdie. If you have liked what you've seen on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button down there below. Don't forget to check us out on the, the Facebook page. Uh, we try to do weekly updates there. Um, also, we got a Patreon page, and we're trying to do more updates there as well uh, to keep that rolling. Be sure to stay tuned and keep your powder dry. You know you're going bad when you go full Scotland, and you can talk better that way than you can when you're doing it in plain English.